Right now, making his way to the ring, Omar Panferita Figueroa Jr. Champions main event of the evening live on CBS 12 rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division at ringside your three judges Don Griffin Kathy Leonard and Nelson Vasquez and when the bell rings your referee in charge of the action is Lawrence Cole and now, introducing first fighting out of the red corner. He wears the blue, black, and silver. The veteran professional brings 37 victories, four defeats with one draw, 11. Victories by way of knockout from Cobridge, Scotland. Introducing the two division former champion, the Rickster Ricky. And across the ring, his opponent today fights out of the blue corner. He wears the black, pink, and green. As a professional, he stands undefeated. 24 victories, no defeats with one draw. 18 victories by way of knockout. Hailing from and fighting out of Lewis Lovett, Texas, the former lightweight champion, Omar Pantanita. Raucous response from the partisan crowd here in Hidalgo. The tale of the tape. Figueroa Jr. is younger and making his debut at 140 pounds will have a two-inch reach advantage over the battle-tested former two-division champion Ricky Burns. And the rules in Texas, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The fight is official after four rounds of an accidental foul. Happens before four rounds are complete. It's a no decision. After four, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. <laughs> referee Lawrence Cole, the bell goes. We are underway, scheduled for 12 rounds. Immediately, Burns looking to establish the jab. Comes out pumping and shot. Stop! Step back. Figueroa stepping up in weight after going 14 and 0 with 10 knockouts since a split draw with Arturo Quintero in November 2010. That fight taught him to always remain in shape. He felt he wasn't in the proper condition for that fight. He was lucky to escape with the draw. And here's the stack, guys, for Figueroa's last three fights comprise one-third of the total rounds he has fought as a professional. Burns has had a great start to this fight so far. Some decent combinations, sharp jags landed. So we're gonna see how Figueroa can make some adjustments early on. Burns, uh, corner did say that they had a great plan. You could see the plan unfolding with the jab. He's trying to turn Figueroa, so Figueroa can't go to his strength, which is squaring up and working with both hands. Couple of right hands by Burns. He defeated French journeyman Alexandre Lapelli via points in his 140-pound debut back in October of last year. There's teeing off again with the right hand, so aggressive start for Ricky Burns, looking to make the most of his American debut. There's a counter right by Figueroa, and of course, even if Figueroa misses, you know the crowd is going to respond to everything he throws, and that could impact the judges. It could right Not now. Right now, it's obvious that Burns is landing the telling punches. 
Now he stopped oh, right there. Oh, to the body by Figueroa. And now Figueroa beginning to find success with the body work going over top of the right. There's a right hand by Burns in the clinch. I'd like to see the replay on that. That looked like a clean punch. Yeah. And also, could be wrong. And also Figueroa was turning his head on the inside. Exactly. So. He turned right into the punch. It, was, it wasn't an intentional grab. Footwork by Burns not known as being a big puncher. Only 11 knockouts among his 37 victories. 45 seconds left in the first. And there's a right cross by Burns who backs Figueroa into the ropes. Jab by Burns in his first round, and he's landed it consistently. He's kept the all balance with it, although Omar is now starting to up the pressure a little bit. A solid combination by Burns. One thing you'll notice about Figueroa, he changes stances a lot, but he can fight pretty well out of both stances. Burns has been a champion at 130 and 135 pounds. Figueroa champ at 135, another stiff jab from Burns. Solid start for Ricky Burns. Omar Figueroa wanting to establish himself here round two, but immediately Burns begins where he left off, establishing that jab. The jab has been working effectively for him since the beginning of this fight. Omar started to jab back with him. He hasn't established anything yet to show that he's going to turn this around to his favor. But we'll see as the round progresses. And right Burns away, he turns away continuing to tattoo Omar Figueroa. Burns telling us that he knows Figueroa likes to come forward, throws at high volume style, which he feels is perfect for his own style because he leaves himself open, walking into a lot of punches, Pollard. Yeah, yeah. All right now, uh, Burns doing a good job of setting up Figueroa off the jab and then off from that punch. He awaits, he allows Figueroa to put himself out of position and then follow up with the combination. It's worked for him thus far. Although Figueroa. Omar keeps upping the pressure. We'll see how Burns reacts to it. Yeah, going to work on the body. There's a short left uppercut. Another left uppercut on the inside by Figueroa. Now, this, this is the first time that I've seen a referee pull a fighter's arm out in a clinch. It could be a dangerous situation when you do that. I don't know if it's uh, part of the... His Lawrence Cole has... Uh, been involved in controversy many times before. The son of the former commissioner here in Texas, Dickie Coles, has now the clinch. Is, there he does it again. And then he allows Burns to throw the right hand. Remember the fight involving one man with Marco and Marquez and Jaka Pauli when he yes. put his hand over the microphone to tell Marquez he was ahead on the scorecards? Was suspended for that. Good exchange here on the inside, though. Good exchange. Tom Trader on this fight, and this, this fight is getting good. Well, Second warning for the behind the head, but again, it's Omar who's ducking his head underneath. Cole is becoming a big factor in this fight. I don't mean to criticize him, but he's becoming too involved into this fight. And knowing that Figueroa style is going to And if he's going to move, like, he's going to move people's hands out of the way. Right. He should be moving Omar's right there, too. Nice body Burns shot by Burns. the body, right uppercut. Under a minute left to the second. We'll oh. focus on the action at hand, and Burns delivering some solid shots to Omar Figueroa. Leans him into the ropes. Left hook. So oh, Ricky Burns couldn't have asked for a better start here in his first fight in the USA. He couldn't ask for a better start, but I don't know why he's got the full attention of the referee right now I'm doing his work when both men are engaged in an end fight. And, and Burns doing a good job of smothering when he's not punching, and then he makes space for his own punches, and then takes away the space from Omar here. But also, Paulie, he has one hand free. Uh, Burns uh, uh, has uh, one hand free. He's entitled and now to Figueroa punch with the free hand. comes forward. The crowd erupting as Figueroa goes on the offensive attack. Here in round two, left hook, left uppercut. Burns comes back with a combination of his own. The action is heating up here in Adalgo, Texas. Now, Figueroa just hit him. We talked about the miles on the odometer for Ricky Burns. Look at the edge and experience, and it can be a pro and a con. He has 312 professional rounds compared to just 99 for Figueroa. And a great start for the Brit. Yeah, and Figueroa has to make some adjustments early on in this fight. He's allowing Burns to dictate when the combinations are thrown. He's allowing Burns' jab to put him out of position. And Burns fighting like a guy whose career depends on this performance, having had issues with his promoter, forced to declare bankruptcy. 
And yet here he is now wanting to reestablish himself as a player at a new weight class. His second fight at 140. This is Figueroa's debut and back comes Figueroa. Now, both men had their hands yeah, free like that, that time. Yeah. No, I don't and Lawrence like Cole continues to pull yeah. Ricky Barnes' uh, arms away. He's putting I, him in a dangerous situation here by doing that when Figueroa's doing the same thing. Right there again, he pulls his arm loose. And, and that's the thing. It's back and forth with the, with the holding on the inside. And now Figueroa Good unloading, culminating with a right hand to the body, backing Burns up momentarily. Burns, there's a right uppercut. And Lawrence Cole continues to inject himself into the fray unnecessarily, my friends. Now, I think he heard us. He's letting them fight out. Ricky Burns at this point seems more physically stronger than the younger Figueroa uh, moving up in this weight class. Oh, slick right uppercut, another right uppercut just misses on the inside past the midpoint of round three. Figueroa unable to close the distance and land effectively on Ricky Burns. There's one thing Figueroa has been able to do is at least get the fight at close quarters this round. Exchanges have gone both ways, but at least the real estate is where Figueroa would prefer it, which is at closer range. Figueroa was a multi-sport athlete, a pitching prospect who attended Texas A&M on an academic scholarship to study construction science. But he dropped out after a semester to become a boxer, wants to construct a Hall of Fame career, has had hand issues, but he is a fan-friendly fighter and a huge favorite here in his, well, I want to say his backyard because it is, Hidalgo, Texas, 22 miles away from where he grew up in Westlaco, as they now continue to unload. A rough and tumble fight, folks. If they're allowed to fight, it's a great inside action fight. And they are definitely yeah. delivering the action. Two, Two ways. Changes. 30 seconds left in the third. See, Burns being smart here. He's smothering Figueroa around the ropes. And then nice move by Figueroa to spin him around. Left hook to the body and a flurry of punches from Figueroa. Left uppercut, checks the jaw, Burns. Burns coming back with a couple of shots. Final seconds of a fantastic third round. PBC on CBS. Practice makes perfect for these two warriors. And coming into the fight, Burns was a big underdog. And would it be out of the realm of reason to say that he may be up 3-0 going into the fourth? I mean, I had him win in the first two rounds. The third round was a little closer. They've gone either way. Let's we'll see. One thing, again, you got to notice is the, the real estate is where Figueroa would at least like it to be. Burns doing a good job of smothering Figueroa up against the ropes and taking away the space when he wants to look. Figueroa with the big edge through in power shots through three. So, again, that could play. I mean, that is the big factor. So even though Burns started well, Figueroa definitely landing more power shots. Oh, right cross lands by Burns. Right uppercut, another, oh, piston-like uppercuts. And Figueroa going to work on the inside. This is becoming almost a street fight type of yep. fight. And suddenly, Burns' jab has disappeared due to the pressure of Figueroa, Virgil. In fact, it has disappeared. Figueroa does not let him go anywhere. He's putting constant pressure on him. He's really starting, but Burns is countering very well. If he can keep it up, he's still in this fight. Yeah, and, and when he is able to use that jab, like he just was right there, he still sets up his combination really nicely. The jab puts Omar Figueroa out of position. Omar attacking the body with a jab and then delivers a left uppercut right hand to the body and Burns now just wants to clinch as Figueroa punching his way out of the clinch and referee Cole letting him do so. Oh right hand connects by Burns and boy you talk about if they still existed this is the proverbial phone booth fight. <laughs> it really is. Burns seems to have a method to his madness. He lets Figueroa work. I don't know if Figueroa pulls oh. the bobbin and then he counters with clean, precise play shots. Yeah, right uppercut and another one. The uppercut becoming his signature punch in this fight. I'd say Burns has been the more accurate guy, but Figueroa has put on put in there some good combinations as well. 45 seconds left in the fourth. 
Thus far, delivering as expected. Figueroa, remember, Paulie, we were ringside. July of 2013, one of the most savage affairs I have witnessed in boxing against Nahito Arakawa. Landed over 450 power shots, number four all time on CompuBox. Yeah, I mean, he's been known to be in those kind of fights. And he looks like he's trying to make it that kind of fight again. No, Does he know any? And that's why I don't like that warning because oh, Figueroa came in with his head. Figueroa came in with his head. So you you can't just take a headbutt. You got to push the guy's head off you and you got to push him down there. We are through four rounds here in Adago, Texas. Terrific. And we rejoin the action live. Round of five underway. Ricky Burns, former two division champion. Omar Figueroa, former lightweight champion, now eating the jabs. And you see that. It, it puts Figueroa where Burns wants him to still, and lines him up for the distance for the right hand. Figueroa has to do a better job of moving his head and getting inside when that happens. Because Burns cannot jab going backwards. Whenever Figueroa backs him up, Burns, you see Burns can't throw those punches. He's not, he's not, he's, he can't fight on that back foot. Second warning, holding, no. Mark. Referee call, giving Burns his second warning for holding. Now from the southpaw stance, the jab for Figueroa closes the distance. Virgil, he's been very effective on the inside with those uppercuts. He has been very effective. Yeah, and there's holding by Figueroa, so yes. I'd like to see Cole move Figueroa's arms out of the way as well. Yes, you have to call the both ways. Figueroa has been very effective on the inside, but some of his help has come from uh, impartial referees, if you ask me. But he's, he's, he's both men are going to be on both inside. Let them both work. And now they continue to work, leaning in on each other. Right uppercut from Burns, chopping away now with right hands. There's a right left from Figueroa, fighting from the southpaw stance. And remember, he's had multiple hand issues throughout his career. More hand issues than a kleptomaniac, Virgil. He has had hand issues. He's moving up in weight here. Burns does seem much physically bigger than Figueroa. I don't know if that would be a telling factor in the fight. I don't know if Burns feels he shot Figueroa working well. Barrage of body blows from Figueroa. And the crowd rallying behind its hometown favorite with chance of Omar. But Burns remains in the thick of it, Paul. Yeah, he sure is. And both two-way action on the inside of Figueroa playing some nice body shots this round. Final minute of the fifth round. They aren't going anywhere. There's a couple of right hands close. Burns now wants to well a front face lock. Lead right. The jab from the southpaw stance, 45 seconds, and again they come together. Oh, shut right hand. I tell you, when there's a distance between them, Burns get way of the lens and good shots. Figueroa has to maintain that short distance because from the outside he gets tagged with clean right hands. Yeah, Burns, a rugged, busy, come forward fighter, has solid boxing skills when he chooses to use them, and he's been able to use them tonight behind that jab. But Figueroa now making things rough on the inside, delivering those left hands. 15 seconds left in the fifth. Toe to toe we go as PBC on CBS continues. The bell and round six. Burns' first title came at 130 pounds, defeating Roman Martinez to become Scotland's 12th world titleist. Now competing at 140 pounds. This is Omar Figueroa's first fight at that weight. Give it a hand by Figueroa. Burns comes out every round for 15 seconds and lands a couple of jabs, and then they go right into the phone. And their big advantage in terms of the Coffee box stats for body punches landed through round five. A huge edge for Figueroa. And between rounds, Ricky Burns' corner told him to keep working inside. What do you think of that? Well, I think they noticed that the only time Figueroa has the advantage is when he gets inside. And being that Figueroa is starting to make the real estate shorter and shorter every round and getting a lot more time on the inside, if they want Burns to make sure he gets the better of those exchanges inside. I wonder right now how effective Sugarloaf's punches are on the inside because when he does punch ball, he's, he's up help. on his toes. He's up on his toes, his feet are not slanted, so I'm wondering how effective they are. It's time to tell. Each fighter has a different uh, way of doing things. Very interesting to watch. Get up again, my friend. Good combination. Both, both, guys landing. Volume. both guys landing good combinations on the inside. 
I don't know about those combi box numbers being so one-sided because both guys have landed a pretty even amount of punches to me. I don't want to get you started on combi box, my friend. Just call the fight. Midway point of round number six. 90 seconds remaining. And they continue to just stand right in front of each other and throwing all of their full arsenal at their opponent. As now Figueroa again with the uppercuts. But Burns continues to fight back, trying to rough up Figueroa. Left hook to the body by Figueroa. What I mean by Figueroa is put down getting a real leverage on his punch. His legs are spread wide, so he doesn't have his legs under him. And he comes up on his toes and he falls forward a lot because he's up on his toes. So how effective the body shots are, I don't know. It allows him to throw a lot of pit pet punches as well every now and then a solid punch. But how effective they are, time will tell. And referee Cole again going back to work on the arm. Under 45 seconds left in the sixth. Oh, good body shot. Nice, nice burns. body shot. Yep. Burns. Figure all right back in his face. And, and he delivers a left hook to the liver. Under 30 seconds left in the sixth. It's a tough, tough fight for a young prospect to be in. He's already been a champion at the age of 25. Burns at 32. Making his debut in America. Brings a record of 37, 4, and 1. There's a left hook to the body by Burns. Creates some space. Unloading on Figueroa. Another strong round of action here in round six. See Burns starts that round with a jab. Comes right out with that jab. Lands three or four of them, they go right back in the phone. Dude. And that's the thing, Burns. I think he tries to establish the jab, but then the figure all pressure becomes too much. Round seven underway. And there's a nice double jab followed by the right cross by Ricky Burns. At this distance, Burns is clearly superior, so it's up to Figueroa to make sure he closes it in time. Smothering him. And there's the right hand on the break by Burns. Figueroa coming forward. Now Burns utilizing that footwork, the lateral movement, avoiding Figueroa for the moment, but finds himself on the ropes. A few seconds back, uh, Burns showed his intelligence. He says, okay, if you go pull my arm, I'm gonna come right back off the floor and hit you. He hits uh, Figueroa with a nice short right hand. Now a wrestling match breaks out. Couple of left hands, Cole breaks them. Stop holding on the inside, touch him up the left spot. And Cole's doing his best to try to clean this fight up, but it's gonna be tough because both of these guys are, uh, don't mind fighting that physical fight inside, so sometimes you just gotta let them go. Unfortunately, it's hard to referee and see everything on the end in there. Well, what happened earlier is he gave Figueroa the okay because he continuously warned uh, oh, Burns. Lead left hook, right uppercut from Figueroa. Burns forced to clinch. So it does allow him to fight to get ugly. You have to warn both men in a fight like that if you see an infraction. It's, it's been a beautiful ugly fight. Yes, it is. An action ugly fight. Under a minute and a half left in the seventh. We're scheduled for 12 in the super lightweight division. Again, Figueroa's legs are very wide. He's on his toes. Oh, there's a left nice. hook to the body by Burns. That was on the belt line by Figueroa. Under a minute left. There's a right uppercut on the inside by Burns as he continues to come forward, trying to sap the energy out of Figueroa, who now resets momentarily in the center of the ring. Burns looking for that little bit of space where he can snap off those punches, but Figueroa always trying to close that distance. This is the kind of fight that can give the uh, the guys doing the stats, Carpal Tunnel Syndrome guys, a lot of punches being thrown in this fight. 30 seconds left in the round. Both men will feel the effects of this fight in the next two minutes. And this isn't the first time Figueroa, Figueroa has been in this kind of scrap. We alluded to his epic encounter with Nahito Arakawa. This is what he loves to deliver for the fans, and he was extra motivated here, knowing that he would be fighting on CBS in front of his family and friends in Hidalgo, Texas. Tomorrow, a lot of left for Ricky Burns. He's putting up a very gallant fight, and he's also showing intelligence in this fight. It shows he had a good plan, just landed a great left hook right there. As Paulie said earlier, he's using his distance and his range very well. When Figueroa closes the distance, he seems to be wanting to engage him there. So. Round eight, this is the same venue that played host to the 
Incredible Israel Vasquez Rafael Marquez 2 2007 fight of the year one of the best trilogies and of course they even went for a fourth fight But I know Figueroa would love to continue to be involved in scraps like that But it's not a not a big testament to longevity. Is it Virgil? Well, I have to agree with you right there tomorrow. It's not a good test for longevity uh, He needs to make adjustments. He continues to want to uh, go with his career this type of fight will catch up with you sooner than later. And Figueroa with the advantage, landing 40% of his power punches. Burns with 34%, and look at that, almost, well, over 800 power punches thrown here through seven rounds. This is a scrap. You know what it is, when you're so close to each other, automatically your instinct is gonna be to keep throwing. Nobody's able to control the distance from the outside and get any rest. So at close range, your instinct is always going to be to move your hands and punch. Yeah, the defense never rests with over a finger rows in the right poly. A minute 40 left in the eighth. Well, the defense always rests. Well, yeah, well, there the you go, point. yeah. Late last round, and also particularly this round, Burns is starting to push Figueroa back on his feet. And that uh, could be a telling factor as we go on with this fight. But he's starting to push him back. Put your uh, coach's hat on, Virgil, quickly. What air, What are adjustments? One adjustment for each fighter going, you know, into the last stages of this fight. There's another right uppercut by Figueroa. I'd like to see Figueroa come in more with his jab rather than walking in. He's letting Burns see what he wants and intends to do. Burns needs to continue to, to uh, clear the space to land the cleaning shots that he's been landing when he has that distance. And that's the thing. Burns is able to pick him off with his own jab because Figueroa tries to walk right in. Once inside, it's both ways. And oh, here, both of them take away a point. Yep. Well, the crowd enjoys it, but Ricky Burns is not plussed. Tough decision. So a point taken away here in round eight for holding a crucial stage of the fight. You know what, when both guys are jockeying for position on the inside like that, it's almost not even holding because both guys are laying all over each other, so there's automatically gonna be that position jockeying with your hands, and sure, there'll be some holding, but it's not outright holding where you're not, you're not trying to fight, you know? So, a little bit harsh, I felt, by the referee. 30 seconds left in the eight, Burns now, sensing that he has to pick up the pace with the point deduction, wanting to salvage the round. You know, sometimes guys hold because they don't want to fight. This was more jockeying than holding for not trying to fight. Final 15 seconds. And there is. Burns continues to hold. Figueroa trying to fight with his right hand. Burns now just leaning in on him. Finally throws a punch. There's a right cross. Neither of these athletes willing to give his opponent a quarter as we go into round number nine, another hotly contested affair. Burns, one of the most successful Scottish boxers of the last few decades, and he comes up firing away on Figueroa. See right there, Figueroa always put, ducks his head to the right, to his own right, when Burns throws that jab, and it allows Burns to get proper distance to throw a really nice right hand. And he welcomes Figueroa in close with another right uppercut after Figueroa landed a nice one-two from distance, Virgil. You're absolutely right. Figueroa's coming in, as I said earlier, not behind a jab, so he's leaving himself open and showing his tendencies. He's been doing the same thing at, at every single round, so Burns is zeroing in and landing the same punch on He has to make his adjustments coming forward and closing the distance also. Now right there, Figueroa using his head. But you have a right to protect yourself at all times. The head is a very dangerous weapon, and you have to protect yourself when the head is in that position of your opponent. Your opponent has his head in that position. A minute gone in the ninth, and there another burst of offense from Ricky Burns. And the left uppercut, double left uppercut by Figueroa. Not getting through there. And his right hand just hanging down now, coming up. I haven't quite oh, seen it. Beautiful triple left and the right cross. Fine stuff here from Burns. You see Burns is a bit more accurate a lot of times. Figueroa does do good work inside. Our friends across the pond, and Polly, you've done broadcasting in the UK. They call this a good old-fashioned tear-up. Yeah, that's what it's been for sure. <laughs> left uppercut again. Now, what about the fact that Figueroa has that right hand just hanging there, Virgil? He does. That's been his style all along. But I think he does it to relax himself. He knows where he is when he does that in position. He changes to Salt by. You don't think it's hurt? I 
don't think it's hurt. He's been using it quite a bit, but we'll pay close attention to it. But uh, that seems to be his way of fighting when he's relaxing, if he has an angle where he can do that and not be counted for it. There's a short right hand over the top by Figueroa, but he's definitely uh, heavy with those left hands. There's a left hook to the head by Burns as he creates space, but again, Figueroa just barges ahead right into him, leaning with, in with his head, rips a left hook to the body. Hard body shot by Figueroa there. This is the kind of fight that takes so much out of you physically and mentally. Now, he just used the right hand there, and he hit Ricky Burns in the head, so if it was bothering him, he was going to hit him in the skull, that's for sure. Well, but he favored that punch. We might have a situation. It is non-stop action. Just both of them leaning into each other. Yes, we've had Lawrence Cole having to deduct a point from Burns for holding. But when they are holding, they're usually trying to punch out. They are throwing punches and punches at close quarters. Final seconds of round number nine. And this fantastic fight continues to unfold here in Hidalgo, Texas. Tenth round begins. Let's see how they start out here. And they start out by delivering a one-two combination from Figueroa, going back on the attack. This time Figueroa jabbed his way in. Yes, That's what I was did. curious and to see because it was always Burns who started out the round jabbing and setting the distance. Mora Ronaldo pleased to be ringside with Polly Malinaji and Virgil Hunter. Brent Stover, our host. We hope you're enjoying PBC on CBS. Some great action here today in the Lone Star State as Burns continues to punch. There's some defense. There's some head movement from Figueroa. It is. You know, that's the beauty of fighting styles, and I want to sort of let our viewers know that. Now, here's a man that takes his eyes completely off of you, but has a great sense of knowing where he is. But Burns is still landing these sharp rights in the same spot. Enough of those can do some damage. Both guys. We're going to start to look for both guys starting to get arm weary as we're now in round 10 of a very physical fight. And that, It'll be interesting to see how they close out. Salient point, Polly, they have just continued to, I mean, look, at just even if they're not connecting, there's so much energy being expended. And if there's a stiff left uppercut counter with a left hook to the head by Burns, who goes to the body with the left hand. And it was a nice move when Burns went to the body, stepped over and got it underneath. It seems to be more space for Burns this round. I don't know if it's indication that Figueroa is tired, if he's depleted, but Burns had a lot more space to work this round early in this round. Looks and like Burns right here. punching out of that clinch, getting the better of that exchange. Figueroa trying to walk him down, Burns along the ropes, but using lateral movement, Pauly. Yeah, and he wants to say that this is for the jab, but Figueroa was always better off closing, and he, he just like to see him close it behind some punches. Shopping left hook there from Burns. You know, you want to say fatigue may be coming a factor, but after the pace that they have maintained, how can it not be a factor here yeah. with let, uh, coming up in the final minute of the 10th? Yeah, but, they're only human. And they continue to throw. But, you know, not as much steam on the nope, shots. That's a little true. bit of steam, you know, a little bit of snap, but again, it's, it's going to be normal. Guys are going to fatigue when I, with, a, with a heavy pace, and even you talk if they're about, doing the punching. And you talk about it all the time, you know, especially guys yeah. like Figueroa, all action punches, left to throw power shots, but you got to learn to not always deliver those power shots. It's almost like he's a former baseball well, pitcher. Well, they might it's be a little off Yeah, but they might be power shots, but they might not have the sting of a power right, shot. Right. You know, a, a power shot on, by CompuBox is not anything but a jab. He might throw a hook, but it might not have the same sting that's of a right. hook in round one. And you want to mix it up, right, Virgil? You want to mix it up, and particularly at this stage of the fight. Now, Burns, this round is landing some very clean shots on Figueroa, particularly to the body and the head. Figueroa seems to be depleted a little bit, but Burns also. Right there, Figueroa did a great from job Figueroa. right there. Burns letting... Final seconds here of round 10, and they are in a clinch. And there's Burns with a left. As we head into the 11th round, no knockdowns thus far. One point deducted from Burns in round eight for holding. But it's been the type of action that has the fans at home on the edge of their lazy boys, Polly, as neither of these two athletes has, has subsided with their offense. They haven't, but again, you're going to start to see the fatigue here as we're in 11 and 12 of the championship rounds. We'll see how they're able to close as Burns continues to try to establish his jab early in the round. And the record past round 10, Figueroa, who is undefeated, is 2-0. Burns has been past 10 11 times. Right now, Burns needs to sidestep when Figueroa comes forward. He keeps boxing him and taking him in a circle. Nice move by Figueroa there to get off the road. Even his body-to-body -body jostling, you know, it, it is fatiguing. It is tiring. Taxing battle. 
toe to toe, and the fans wanting to give Omar Figueroa that extra oomph with chance of his first name. Figueroa showing his great white shark eyes again, looking outside the corner of his eyes like he, he doesn't see, but he knows where he is. Left hook to the body. A Velcro type fight here in Omar Figueroa's 140 pound debut. A series of right hands burns his sophomore effort at the new weight. There's a chopping right. Only I'm wondering why Burns doesn't counter those shots to the outside right up the middle. He has his hands right in place and he's under Figueroa. I wonder why he doesn't counter with the upper cut right there. I think it might be just be fatigue though. He's trying to get a breather, but Figueroa keeps moving his hands in there. And even if they might be tired punches of Figueroa, they're still punches and they're making them look busier. Ricky Burns having boxed for 20 years, started at the age of 12, has been a champion. Two different weight classes. Wanting to make a good impression here in his American debut thus far. He's been able to do that. Omar Figueroa, Florian punches off the ropes. A minute left now in the 11th. Oh. Both guys still smiling. And there's a left from Figueroa, rallying. Uppercuts. It's a battle of will here. A battle of attrition. Both of them fishing for that finishing blow, but what a battle it's been. And maybe not as much pop behind these shots, but Figueroa exciting his crowd. Wanting to close the round impressively oh, with 30 shot seconds left. Oh, he heard him there. Yes, he did. And Burns backs up to the ropes. His body shot by Figueroa landed a few seconds ago. Burns clinching. Wanting to stop the attack. There's a left hook to the body by Figueroa. And Figueroa has this crowd in fuego here in his home state. Frustrated. What do you think, Virgil? I mean, that's the end of the round. Two point deduction now for holding. I, I mean, that time he was hurt. You, 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 you almost have to expect the fighter to hold when he's hurt. It was <laughs> a very you, good body that's shot. That's what to a trainer would tell his fighter, right, what Virgil? Exactly. The two valiant warriors touch and embrace, and they will resume hostilities. Lead right hand by Figueroa. And Figueroa going on the attack. Burns trying to fight back. But it seems like Figueroa's got that extra pep in his step. Well, only three minutes left. Nothing to save him for now. Well, this, you're right. Pulling out all the stops is necessary. You, especially here in Texas, you never know how the judges see a fight. Don't leave anything to chance. We saw in our first fight where Jamie McDonald was able to hold on to his Bantamweight title by taking that 12th and final round. Well, thanks to the two-point deductions, you know, we might know how this fight is going to turn out with the judges. <laughs> I, think, I think we know how it's going to go, but Figueroa, to his credit, he's put in some real good work the last two rounds. I mean, dominant work. And he seems to be doing it this round also. And with this crowd behind him, Burns needs a knockout, I believe, at this point. I don't know if he can deliver it. A minute gone in the 12th. There's a short right uppercut that lands for Burns. Oh, good exchange. Yep. And now Burns coming back. Series of right hands. Conditioning definitely not a factor. Burns coming to Texas early, accl acclimating himself to the humidity, the, the sweat box, as they, the Brits called it. Figueroa, of course, fighting for the third time in this arena. You have to give credit to both men. When you have this type of fight, and both men are here in the 12th round, still landing and throwing punches. You have to give both credit That's to both terrific. men. It's a terrific fight. Yeah, no matter how good a shape you're in, it's still mentally taxing yes. to just will yourself through these tough moments in fights like this. They are indefatigable, indomitable fighting spirit on both sides, Burns and Figueroa. Right now, connected. Right, right now Burns is really picking up the, the pace here. Yep, final minute of the fight, and Burns now on the offensive. He's leaving himself open up top, though. Maybe Figueroa was saving it for one last 
Uh, wind up at the end. Right now it's burnt. Get that sense. Nice shot underneath by Figueroa. Nice left on the knee. The boxing ring is the chamber of truth. Both of these warriors finding out exactly what the other is made of. Both of them continue to throw punches at each other with 25 seconds left. Burns on the offensive. Oh, I think the fight's going in right where they're standing. Trench warfare, Ma. Unbelievable that it has been like this since the opening round. We have completed 36 minutes oh, of ooh. simulating action. They continue to throw at the bell. What a fight in Hidalgo. to 109 while judges Kathy Leonard and Don Griffin both see the fight the same at 116 to 110 all for the winner by unanimous decision Omar Bancarica Figueroa Jr. In his native Texas Omar Figueroa records a wide unanimous decision win over Ricky Burton.